welcome back to this channel i appreciate you for always checking in every sunday so as you always come in may god continue to be with you and bless you okay thank you so much and may god never abandon you so the aim of this channel is to inspire our faith especially in the time of challenges and difficulties the aim of this channel is to make sure that we remain strong even in the middle even in the midst of great challenges okay so today we are going to talk about what to do when it looks as if god does not answer our prayers so if this is the first time you are coming in please try and subscribe if you have not subscribed please try you can see that this channel is growing every day so join us every sunday okay so we are going to talk about today what to do when it looks as if god does not answer our prayers but in today's program i am not going to be the speaker i invited some people to contribute in today's program so in today's program we are going to hear from three persons we are going to hear from father anthony okongo Father Anthony Okonkwo is a priest of the Catholic Diocese of Wolo in Nigeria. I also going to hear from Father Tony Paul. Father Tony Paul is an Indian priest. Okay, okay, and also we're going to hear from Sister Vima. Sister Vima is a Filipino sister. So now I, they are going to contribute on this topic. So I ask you to listen to them. You can, oh, you can. Uh, react at the end of the video you can say what you feel or what you think or you can make your own contribution on this because many people are losing faith many people feel or some people think that God is not real God is real God is not an imagination so so many people are abandoning their faith many people are going back to to the, the old traditions so we have to know that our God is true so this is why I'm bringing up these topics to make sure that our faith remains so strong in God so let us hear from them thank you so much and may God bless you as you listen so sister how do you react or how what do you do when it looks as if God does not answer your prayers that's why it's very, very difficult. So even God, uh, uh, there, when there, it there, seems that fire. God doesn't answer my prayer, yeah. I still continue to pray. Although sometimes, as a human as I am, you, I feel discouraged. I, but but that discouragement it doesn't mean that I have to stop. Uh, so I have, I still continue to pray. And later on, I realized that. That God, if, if He is not really answering my prayer now, in maybe in other time He will answer. Do you do you feel sad or depressed when God doesn't answer your prayers the way you want? Do you feel I sad? Feel, I feel yes. I really feel sad. I really feel sad, and I really feel. Uh, Broken hearted, really, when <laughs> especially when I prayed for the sick, and and the sick one is is no, no cure. Okay, so I really feel this so now sad. So, but you, you don't give up on God, right? But, yes, whatever happens. So, what advice can you give to people? Who feel that God does not answer their prayers? What advice can you give to them? Just keep praying and just keep um, uh, hope. No? hope. Okay, so thank you so much. God bless you. Can I know you? Uh, Father, I am Father Paul Lonichen Joseph. I am an Indian priest. Okay, so um, what do you do or how do you react or what do you think 
when God does not answer, or when it seems God does not answer your prayers? Father, the primary response I would like to give, uh, not exactly as a priest, but as a man uh, who prays and whose prayers are not always answered. I also have come across uh, uh, times when I felt that, oh, God is not uh, uh, listening to me and He is uh, not uh, giving me uh, everything that I, that, I, uh, that I ask of Him. And so I feel sad, really, I, sometimes I feel sad, I feel desperate, sometimes even I, I, I don't feel like praying. Huh? I'm praying and I'm not getting it, then why should I do it again? But then I am reminded of uh, my childhood when I was dependent on my parents, on my father and mother. And I still remember uh, many things I have demanded, I have asked for, and they have not given me. But when certain things which I really needed, and which I did not ask for, they have given me. For example, the education. <laughs> I did not get, really want to go to school. <laughs> huh? I wanted uh, uh, holidays to sit at home and enjoy and roam around with my friends. But they did not uh, allow me to do that. That petition of mine was not approved by my father, not by my mother. Instead, they gave me education, something that they chose for me. And now, I owe to them. And what I am right now, uh, my education has gone into that. And I still remember that I, I sometimes I just uh, wanted uh, new clothes. And I demanded for that. Father would say, later. He said, later. And I will go on uh, now crying after my mother. She just says, haven't you heard what father has said? You wait. And slowly when I grew up, I understood that that denial of the times helped me to remain simple in my life. To understand the pain because my, te my parents were teachers and uh, they could really give a norm which I asked but they did not give. Uh, instead, when I was uh, not denied of that such demands, it helped me understand the pain of poor people. And maybe I think that disposition uh, which God developed in me later helped me choose this vocation and to remain as a, as a dignified religious uh, and help me live in, like Paul says, whatever limited situations to remain uh, contented and happy. But it is my experience that whenever I pray to God with a felt need, especially when I pray for others, and I'm happy to see that they are blessed. And when someone else prays for me, I also will get. But my father and my mother, what all really needed, they gave me. And sometimes when I was denied of that, I really understood the value of that gift. I really understood how my parents also would be struggling to provide it for me. So now I feel that no, God the Heavenly Father is uh, no, uh, just like my father or mother. He provide for my needs, not for my um, luxury or yeah. not for my greed. Mm -hmm. Still, I would say anybody, don't give up. Hang on. God will never give us up. He will never give us up on us. Instead, He will give whatever that will need to help us remain in our faith and that which are needed for the good of our souls and for our salvation. Just remember of the, the prayer that the, the psalmist makes. Don't make me uh, rich because I may go proud. Don't make me poor, because I may, I may get jealous of the rich or I may steal from others. So provide me only what I need and give it in, in 
died. And I am sure God does that, not only to me, to all who depends on me. So what words do you have for those who are undergoing depression? Do you think that God is here to answer their prayers? What encouragement do you have for them? Yes, I, I, would, uh, I would like to tell them to fall back in our own lives and look at uh, the gifts, so many gifts which are given to me without being asked for. As, as I said, no? uh, there are so many gifts God gives us. Uh, like even this life is a gift. Uh, we may not be so rich, but at the same time we are not starving. Uh, and maybe because of this, during this pandemic, we have come to know the value of uh, the breathing air, the quality of good air and oxygen. We, none of us pray for that really, you know. Uh, and for the good water, the situation, uh, the good relationships that are given to us. Uh, people around who can understand and who prays for us. So many gifts are given to us uh, without being asked for. And certain, certain gifts, uh, we pray for when it is denied, uh, still uh, we have to strive for that. Uh, look at the experience of all biblical characters, you know? uh, like, uh, like Abraham and Sarah, uh, like uh, Zachariah and Elizabeth. Uh, they all were you know, praying, 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 and then at the, at the point they have stopped. They have stopped expecting for any gift. And it is at that time. Uh, God gives them uh, the gift for which they have prayed. So, uh, I trust in the Lord who always has a plan for us. We are limited human beings. We do not understand the divine plan behind, behind uh, now what all things are happening. But trust that we have a Lord, we have a God. Uh, look at the example of Jesus Christ also. We find him crying upon the cross, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Where are you? No answer was given actually at that time. Poor thing, he simply died on the cross. But trusting in the Father. Because earlier in his life, without being asked, the Father bore witness to this beloved Son. That he is the chosen, he is the beloved Son. And just falling onto that memory, getting strength from that, Jesus died upon the cross, just entrusting him into the hands of the loving and faithful Father. And we find he died. He did not uh, remain uh, on the cross or he did not come down from the cross. The temptation was actually that, no? Mm -hmm. Many people wanted him to come down from the cross and prove that uh, he is Lord God and so forth, Son of God, the Father. But he died. The Father allowed him to die so that he even beat the power of death and he rose again on the third day. After dying, he rose up. And that is the power of the Father. And that is providence. Depend on the Father. He will provide us in the needed time the needed strength to prove that He really loves us and we are the beloved. Trust in the Lord. That's my, uh, my humble request to anybody who wants to give up on depending on God. Thank you so much for this wonderful interview. May God bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Okay. Uh, Abraham, uh, as our father in faith, has a lot of experiences with God. He, uh, let's say, for instance, when he had the first covenant with God at the age of 75. Okay, just check a lot of time it took for Abraham to reach at the pinnacle of his success, or the, rather, when the, the promises God made him came to realization. Abraham stayed from 75 years to 99 years when he had the second covenant with God, when God visited him and told him to count the stars in the heaven, what 
the number of the sky will be the kind of the number he will have at, among his sons. But still, after a year, Abraham was getting up to 100. Then that is when the uh, manifestation of that particular incident came to realization with the emergence of Isaac. Okay, we have an example again, like the personality of Hannah, the woman with faith again, woman who trusted what God can do in her life. She undergo many trials, many everything about to her, but at the end of the day, God surely answered him. That is God for you. God answers me when in, at his own pace. In, uh, yes, my work is just to pray, and then God will do that. I will pray and wait. Uh, in due time, God will surely answer me. That is my belief in God. Okay, like myself as a priest, if I, I, it looks as if God is not answering my prayer, I will never succumb. I will keep on praying. I will never relent. I will keep on praying because I know that my father will never close his ears uh, as, as against my prayers. Just I know that one day, one day, God will surely answer me. But if I'm not a priest, the person might even have the feeling of, no, I'm tired. I don't want to pray again. I don't want to fight. I'm tired. Maybe God doesn't want to answer me, but that is not that way. If I have an opportunity to advise such a person, I will tell the person persistence, steadfastness, and strong faith in God is the key to God, is to, God, to open God's heart. That is the key to open God's heart. Yes, the steadfastness, being firm in God, and that faith, having faith in God, consistency in prayer. Look at what happened in the life of Jacob when he fought with the Spirit of God. He said that I will never let you go unless you bless me. Okay, look at it again as Father Mbaka always said, the acronym of prayer, pray. That is P-R-A-Y, pray until you push, keep on pushing. That is what prayer is all about, yeah, pray until something happens in your life. That is what I believe in. So I don't believe that there is a way that God will not answer me. Even in, at that angle, when we say that, the consequences of unanswered prayer is unfaithfulness, not knowing what to ask, or not being uh, uh, firm in what you ask God uh, out of your sin, or uh, yeah, the sinful life or, or life of unrighteousness. Just then, see if I know what can cause uh, God not to answer me, then I will have to redress uh, my life. I will have to redress a lot of things in my life. And by so doing, I know that I'm bringing God closer to myself. So, in a situation where you want something from God, and you keep on asking God for a particular favor and it looks as if God is not even willing to answer you but that is not the truth of the whole matter the truth is it is God is aware and God has listened to you but I believe that when you pray in due time God will surely answer you it might not be at that particular time you want that particular thing to happen in your life but in due time God must surely answer you that is God for you